Do you know what guinea pigs and women in technology have in common? <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> uh, this is an old joke I used to hear a lot some time ago. The popular answer is this. Guinea pigs are related to technology the same way uh, women are... Sorry. <laughs> Guinea pigs are related to Guinea the same way, the same way women are related to technology. <laughs> um, I'm here to tell you that this is complete and utter nonsense. And let me start with a story. So it's about a little girl who was born in a very typical Armenian family. And normally her destiny would be pictured like this. She'll go to school, enter university, find a husband, have some kids, uh, become an exemplary housewife, uh, work as a teacher maybe. Um, and learn to cook an excellent dolma. Well, in this particular family I'm going to tell you about, things went a little different. Something somewhere went wrong, and the first signs of troubles have started to emerge as the family bought her, their first computer back in 1996. Their teenage daughter started to show signs of computer addiction becoming a computer rat, in their words. Uh, her initial plans to become a journalist quickly vanished, and she started to dream to become a hack hacker. Um, since the age of 13, she became the computer expert for her whole extended family. She was getting emergency calls whenever someone couldn't find a certain key on their keyboard or just couldn't change the font properties in the word processor. Since then, let me Google it for you uh, has been a phrase she used a lot, and well, the RTFM. <laughs> One of the happiest moments of her life was buying a laptop. She needed this portable computer she could use even in bed and go to cafes and stuff. And when she had it, it was still not very common to walk on the streets with these big laptop bags yet. And she occasionally felt herself like the little Tiffany from The Man in Black. Uh, with the Web 2.0 and the new media emerging, she um, she became a, an early adopter and, and was labeled as a tech evangelist, one who signs up all the new social networks, manages to be aware of the uh, industry news, and has built some online, uh, big online personality with big network, many followers. Um, and she was labeled as a geek. And she started to explore what's in that world. So who are geek girls? These are the most common perceptions I've brought together. They're not feminine, and they mostly hang out with other geeks like them. <laughs> well, um, other perceptions include that they use a lot of techno slang, they must work in tech industry, and they must know good programming. Um, in reality, some of these are just truly just myths, and in reality, geek girls are, first of all, very independent, or better to say, they are very self-dependent people. They can solve most of their own problems, like they can uh, set up their uh, wireless network at home, configure the router, even without the prior knowledge on networking. They just know how to dig stuff, um, dig, dig about it, searching through uh, search results or through technical forums. Also, giggles are very smart, witty, and tech-savvy. Even though they don't depend on other people for their problems, they are very much gadget and connectivity dependent. They learn very quickly. Um, they just know how to Google stuff or YouTube things like how to fix damaged headphones or um, how to gift wrap a box. And uh, geek girls, they're uh, info junkies and they just love sharing. That's why they are very active in social networks. Also, they can be really cute, just like socialites, you know. Um, well, for the socialites, what are the most common uh, stereotypes we know? They are uh, shopaholics. Um, with a particular, they worship shoes, and um, also they admire Lady Gaga for some reason, and uh, Sex and the City is one of their favorite shows of all time. Well, I know a geek girl who's a shopaholic with a particular passion for shoes. She recently told us that she has counted about 27 pairs in her 2011 spring-summer collection. I know a geek girl who loves Sex and the City, and uh, yeah, and she reads Cosmo, and these are not quite like the perceptions, right? Um, now let's go back to the girl I was telling you about in the beginning. The netbook that's the default accessory in her purse is actually pink. It has Google, Android, Firefox, and Hello Kitty stickers next to each other. She meets her friends not by calling and asking where they are or where she is. They have Foursquare and other geolocation services like that. 
Um, you can meet a geek girl in some party, all dressed up, on towering heels, talking on their cell phone, explaining someone how to, f how to fix the damn server, you know. Um, you can meet a geek girl who's restarting that damn router in a cafe when they badly need a Wi-Fi. Do you see this girl? This is Annie. She has written an alarm clock application for her sp friend's phone because it didn't have one. And these girls, Nelly and Gane, they have built a, a, a website dedicated to indie music all by themselves, coding, promotion, and stuff. Also, geek girls were very active at Biermann Bar Camp's organization, and, well, I was one of them. I was, guess what, I was telling about, some of you know, I was telling about how to date a geek girl. Well, somehow this presentation became very popular. It became a viral hit on the web and uh, was declared top presentation of the day, then presentation of the week, then most tweeted, and it ended up getting 20,000 views in just two weeks and was, got a special mention in a Taiwanese website, was show, showing my pictures. I, I couldn't um, translate it. Somehow Google helped me. It was on Taiwanese, and they were uh, particularly mentioning the netbook, which was apparently Taiwanese pride. Um, I want to highlight some of the points from the presentation which might interest you. It's about dating, and um, when a geek girl is dating a geek guy, you know, it's kind of a very predictable. Uh, they communicate via messengers, if, even though they are in the same room, and um, <laughs> they schedule their meetings via Google Calendar invitations. Their computers are sweetly connected to each other with a shared folder in Dropbox, and... <laughs> Then, um, if a geek girl is somehow dating a non-geek guy, uh, it can happen that a gay guy gets paranoid thinking that the girl can hack everything from the, of theirs, starting from <laughs> text messages on the phone, ending with social media accounts, and it ends up not very good. Um, uh, you, you never know that a girl that's, uh, that a pretty girl you'll be fl flirting with in a bar might have already tweeted how bored she is with your conversation and might, might have already checked your Facebook profile while you were looking away. Yeah, <laughs> similar situation. Um, but if the guy is smart enough, um, he can uh, explore her territory, signing up for the social network she's in, engaging in conversation, posting, commenting, and stuff. And these simple steps can help you to make the girl give the root password for their heart. Um, actually, being a geek girl is really cool. Um, make, uh, being a geek makes you feel very confident, independent. Um, you become so much needed and demanded by people around, from your boss to your friends and family. And yeah, with the giggles of Armenia, here's my answer to the question, what do guinea pigs and women in technology have in common? I say that they are both cute. <laughs> and with the gig girls of Armenia, I have decided to establish a community of our own, so I invite the girls to join us. And at last, um, I want to say that uh, a geek's image for a girl comes with some kind of a dumbness filter. You scare all the wrong guys and you attract all the right guys. So girls, enjoy being geeks.